I've learned a lot in these past like five years, six years, maybe seven years. I've been also doing social media since I was 18, technically. <laughs> It's me, Jennifer Biano. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Um, I haven't posted in a while. Sorry. Life got really busy and I just moved into a new apartment um, that I'm super happy in. So I've been like dealing with a lot of that and also like traveling for work and like a bunch of other nonsense. Meow, 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 meow. Today, I really wanted to talk to you guys about something that I get so many questions about like on social media um, and I wanted to like create a helpful video that could help someone like none of my videos are that helpful. <laughs> I don't really create in that genre. <laughs> But I decided today, I was like, you know what, if this could help someone, like, let's do it. So um, this is going to be how I became a social media manager. I know this position is like super popping right now. Um, so, uh, and I live off of being a social media manager in New York City. So I wanted to create a video to talk about how I became a social media manager, how you can become a social media manager and make a living off of creating content and posting for other people. Before we get into this video, I do want to talk about Juano. They actually sent me a magnetic laptop stand and I love laptop stands because I work from my couch, Q couch. I work from my couch and I need a good laptop stand so that my laptop can balance on my couch. So we're gonna be unboxing this right now. Here's the timestamp for when the video starts. The cool thing about this laptop stand is that it's like easy for storage. So if you do live in New York City or you have a small apartment or something, it's, it's foldable, which is super cool. Oh, oh my God, look at this. By the way, there's like a lot of colors. I think there's like light gray, black, a bunch of stuff. So, oh my God. So this is it like flat, right? The, also, I love this pink color because some brands use like a hot pink or like just like an ugly pink and this is like a cute pastel pink and oh my god, there's a like cushion on the bottom. Oh, that's cute. The fact that it has like a little like case like for traveling, that is actually so freaking cute because I don't know about you, but I work like everywhere. <laughs> like I travel and I work, so that is really nice. So here you just take that and it snaps like that. Oh, and this, this little guy that comes off, so this is the iPhone stand. So you can just like snap that. Ah. Also, by the way, this quality feels amazing. Ah, it's all magnetic. So it's so cool. Oh, this is also removable. Oh, so if you're working at a table, you can have this as like a cushion rest. And if you're working like on your lap, this will be a lap. Oh, that's so cool. And then this, you can put it like next to you if you want. Look at this little setup. It's so cute. It's like it's like you're playing around with a whole bunch of different stuff. It's actually so cool. Definitely check this out. Link in the description. It's just really cool how customizable this is. Like you can adjust the angles of like everything. And um, it is just super cool that it's like a two in one. The color is beautiful. It feels like really good material. And I love, again, that everything is like so removable. This is... You can put it here if you want. This is so cool. And it has a little travel bag. Guys, definitely check it out. Link in the description. All right, let's get into the video. As a background on me, um, I have worked freelance, full-time. I've hired social media managers. I've been on both sides of the hiring and being hired. Um, and I'm a YouTuber, so content creator. Uh, I've done internships. Um, and I've made it to a place where I can financially afford to live in a one-bedroom apartment in New York City by myself. But yeah, not saying like I made it or anything, because like, you know only 25, um, still have so much, so much to go, but um, I've gotten comfortable in where I am in this position and I, I would love to share like what I've learned thus far and hopefully help you. So a little background on me, I started posting on YouTube when I was like 17, 18, um, like right as soon as I got out of high school because I didn't want to be bullied in high school because <laughs> I was already getting bullied enough. And I grew my following on YouTube to 20,000 subscribers and that took me about two or three years of like consistent posting. like. Consistent posting being like posting a video every three days. I don't know how the 
frick I did that, like no clue at all, but I did. <laughs> um, but I was in college at the time, so, and I like, I was especially like, I busted a bunch of, busted, that's a crazy word. I freelanced, I full-time, and I've worked for over 15 brands. And I, by the way, I was studying like biology in college. I was studying bio, like I was planning to be an orthodontist, I was planning to be a dentist, um, but, my plan changed senior year, second semester. Let me know if you have, if you want to hear the full story time. But anyways, that's not the point of the video. Um, so I basically, I think the most important thing about working in social media is that you have to have a portfolio because no one's going to hire you if like you don't have something to show for it, which you could say about any like field but like really with social media if you don't have a portfolio make a portfolio like create content for yourself and if you really don't want to create content with your face or you really don't want to create content in your apartment because like the content that you could create for social media is really like either your face is in it or you're doing some ASMR video with like food or you're filming like your environment. Like either you're filming your environment, you're filming products or you're filming yourself. Um, so if none of those things is something that you want to do, you don't want to build your own social media platform, then you have to do internships. Best combo is building your own platform and creating your own content and internships, which is what I did. So the way I got my first internship actually was because I was already doing YouTube. They saw that I was posting videos, editing, whatever, and that's the reason why I got my first internship and it was unpaid and I had to already have had that done. Which by the way, this was about like six, seven years ago. Um, so when I was first in college um, doing internships, but um, Definitely the number one thing I would suggest is make your own content because even if you don't have the ex professional experience of working as a social media manager for a brand, people will still ask you, ask someone who has hired people for social media managers, people will still ask you, okay, well, have you created your own content? Can you send me any videos that you have filmed and or edited? And that's really important because the biggest thing about social media managers is filming and editing. You can you basically have to be a videographer as well as a strategist. Next internships, do them because having on your resume and portfolio that you have been a manager for brands is already going to get you ahead um, on getting like the position that you want. People, when they hire, they want to know that you have had the responsibility of working for a company as a social media manager and that you have the professionalism, the engagement, like the, um, the outreach of it all like you know how to professionally speak on behalf of a brand on social media and i really i know a lot of people can't afford to do unpaid stuff um i think sometimes you have to juggle having a full-time job maybe in something else and doing an in unpaid internship on the side and a lot of people argue with me on that but i really do feel like again obviously get the paid internship if you can but a lot of times they're mostly unpaid or for college credit or whatever. So one of the biggest things I would say is that social media is still considered kind of like in the art field, like not really, but it is. It's very business and strategy, but it's also art focused because you wear a lot of hats as a social media manager. Like you're a video editor, you're a creative director, you're, um, you're data analyst, you're um, like posting outreach, like you do so much, but it still is considered technically kind of more in the arts. And I feel like to get the job that you want, you have to be willing to compromise getting the payment that you want for a while to build up your portfolio and your resume, which I guess you could say that for everything, but I feel like within the arts or you know, that type of thing, that's more important. Another important thing that I would say is you don't have to have amazing equipment, but that does help. It gives you another selling point. Oh, she has a camera. Another selling point. Obviously, this is gonna be for people who can afford that. Um, it not You don't have to do that. That is not like a necessity, um, but it is really helpful. If you have your own like lighting, you have your own microphone, you have your own camera, obviously that comes the more that you build in, your, in the business. But um, I started off as a YouTuber, so I always had that stuff and I've just upgraded the longer I've gone. But I've always had a camera, I've always had lighting. So having that equipment also adds you as a selling point.
um, because a lot of times as a social media manager, you're the one producing a lot of stuff. Unless you work for a big company and they have videographers on site and everything, then that's not applicable to you. But most of the time we're all, we're working for like small businesses um, and they want you to have everything. <laughs> um, another important, important thing is editing, like video editing, like you should be really good at that. So I have worked on over 15 accounts and honestly, like, the way you edit the video will be the reason it goes viral. Like sometimes like following like a very choppy editing style can go bad, but if you do it the right way, like recently I posted something for a brand and it got over 500,000 views and it was purely the con, it was just because of the way I edited it. So like make sure to learn how to edit I think that's super important. I have spoken, I was like, once upon a time I was hiring social media managers and I was shocked by how little people knew how to edit or film. And I was like, that's, that's a big part of this job is to film and edit, um, as well as strategy and posting and all that. I mean, it's all, it all is, you know, um, it's a new job. So you wear a lot of hats. Anyways, so my biggest points would really be create content yourself. Even if you don't have a brand deal, just take a product and film a video for it. Um, I dated a photographer once and that was what he did. He just would take like random products that he had in his home and film an ad for it and send it to people over email and be like, I could create this for you. And he got jobs because of that. So if you don't have anything to film, just film stuff like as if you have a brand deal with them. Content creation. Number two, editing. Editing is super important. Learn how to edit, learn how to film. Three, internships. Do internships. They are so important because they are an easy way to build up your resume and look more impressive. Number four, having good equipment. This comes later. You don't have to have it now, but always having like the newest iPhone definitely helps. Anyways, guys, I hope this video helped. Definitely check out Huano. Um, if you are working from home or like just need a laptop stand just to be on your laptop at the end of the day on the couch or in the bed, I recommend this so much. It's so cute. It's so configurable and the material is great. This is like one of the most unique laptop stands I've ever seen and I highly, 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 highly recommend it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Bye.